everybody. How's it going? Go ahead and comment to let me know if you're here so that I know I'm live. Okay. All right, tonight we are working on the Sew Together bag. Um, I just wanna wait until I see a few people are on here before we get started. I'll show you guys. Here is the pattern. Hey guys, oh, all your comments came through at once. Hi Becky, Kim, Sue. <laughs> hey Rhonda, how's it going? Okay, good. Glad to know we are all here. Hi Joey, Jackie, Nancy, Darlene. Hey guys. Okay, so tonight we're going to be working on the Sew Together bag. Um, I know that you guys have been looking forward to this one. Um, it's kind of a daunting bag because it has four zippers, but it's actually really simple once you break it down. So I'm excited to start working on this tonight with you guys. Hey, Stephanie. Oh, good. I'm excited. Cindy, Phyllis, Susan. Hey, guys. Yeah, let me know if you're just watching or if you are sewing along with me. Um, if you ordered any materials or the pattern or anything from Just Sewing, you don't have it yet, um, but it's on its way and you just want to watch for now or you're going to rewatch later, this video will be available for replay, so I'm just letting you know. Um, or if there's something you want to go back and look at, you'll always be able to do that as well. Um, so this is my sip and sew. So every other Thursday, it's going to be every other for the summertime. Uh, but every other Thursday at 7.30, I bring to you a sewing project. And you can grab a drink. Tonight I'm drinking apple juice because it's one of the only things I can drink for this month-long diet that I'm doing. Um, but I'm very excited to be here with you guys. Kim is sewing with me. Awesome. So this is the bag that we're making. Um, and I'm going to show it to you guys in a little bit more like closer up detail. Um, trying to sew along, sewing with me, watching first and reviewing when you start, Rhonda. Awesome. Great. Okay, so <clears throat> I actually uh, really like my new setup because I'm able to have three different cameras going on. So we'll see how that goes, testing things out. Um, Cindy and Rhonda are in the same boat. Awesome. Okay, so um, if you saw my post from a couple days ago, you know that I am I am coming into this expecting you guys to have cut everything out and fuse ironed all of your fusible. And if you wanted to quilt your exterior, you can have that done, but we may not even touch the exterior today. Um, I looked at the pattern um, to figure out like a good stopping point because I know we won't get this all done in one sitting. I want to be done around nine o'clock, so like an hour and a half or when we have all of the zippers in the middle put in. So we'll see how long that takes us. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this bag and kind of walk you through the different steps. So the first step we are going to do um, is we're actually going to create these side panels here. So this is what you cut out with your template in the pattern. So it, look, it will look like this. You'll have two from your exterior and two from your lining. And the ones from the lining, you'll have your interfacing views to the back. So the first thing you're going to do is sew these right sides together and then top stitch them to get them ready for the rest of the bag. But then we set them aside for a little while. So we'll do that first. And then the next thing that we're going to do is create this entire middle section. So this middle section is made up of one, two, three, four pockets and three zippers. So when you're looking at your um, pattern, the way that these are labeled is the pockets are called lining right here. And then the zipper pockets are called uh, zipper pocket lining. So that's the kind of difference here. Um, Elizabeth, yes. Um, it is available in the shop, but I think we're almost out of the patterns. I think I have maybe one more, but we ordered more that I'm hoping will come in um, this upcoming week. Hi, Annie. Yes, I'm in my new home after we just got married. I've been living here for a couple weeks, and I love it. 
I'm almost ready to give you guys a full tour, but this weekend hopefully I'll be hanging some stuff on walls and it'll be a little bit more interesting then. <laughs> um, so yeah, this just I just want to make sure that you guys could see what it looks like when it's finished because I think that's helpful. So I think that's what we'll be able to complete tonight. Um, if not, I'm going to be cutting it off around 9 o'clock. And then um, in two weeks, the next time that we meet, um, we'll put the whole thing together. We'll attach the exterior and all of the bindings and this outside zipper as well. So that's kind of what we've got going on here. And then it zips up. One thing to note about this is that based off of your interfacing that you use on the exterior, your bag will look different. So I'm actually going to go grab my other one real quick. This is the one that I use for markers. And this one is quilted, and I actually used um, soft and stable. So that's like a foam interfacing. That's a little bit thicker. And so you can see my zipper kind of, my binding with my zipper kind of closes up because this interfacing I used is really stiff. But I kind of wanted that. I was kind of experimenting. I wanted to see what that was like. Also, the exterior I pieced with a mini charm. So really, if you look at the pattern here, you can do all kinds of embellishments, um, all kinds of scrappy looks um, or something like this. With your exterior, you can do all kinds of stuff. So um, if you want to do it with this one or you just want to make it real simple for your first one and then experiment later on, it's up to you. But you can also see on this sample in the pattern that each one of their lining pieces is of a different fabric as well. So if you really like the scrappy look, you can make almost every piece of this bag a different fabric or if you're just trying to get through all of your, um, your whole stash. I like it when mine all match. So I have mine all matchy-matchy. Um, but this one I did not quill and I just used the Shape Flex. So it's a lot more flimsy, but I kind of wanted that as well for this one because I carry so many markers in here. It's already so tight and uses up all of the extra space with all the stuff that's inside. So I'm glad I didn't make it any thicker. Um, but then the one that I'm making today with you guys, I used fusible fleece. So really, I haven't ever actually done it like this before. Um, I've used two different interfacings, but not this one. Um, and this is the quilt pattern that I did. I just drew um, 45 degree lines um, to make these diamonds. And I used a cool decorative stitch on my machine. I don't know if you can if you can see it. It's supposed to mimic a hand stitch. So it's like a thin stitch, a thick stitch, a thin, thick, thin, thick. So it kind of, it's obviously still a machine stitch, but it kind of mimics a hand stitch because every other one is a lot thicker. So I just wanted to try out a new stitch on my machine, but I don't think we'll get to this piece tonight. Um, how many mini charms does it take for the outside? It just takes one mini charm pack. You just sew uh, one mini charm pack together um, and it will be big enough. I don't remember if you need to trim it down at all, but I remember it just took one mini charm. Okay, so the fabric I'm using today is from the collection called So Wonderful. Um, if any of you guys are interested, if you um, don't have any of the material yet for this project, but you want it, um, I'd be happy to put together a kit for you. Um, just let me know what colors or fabric collection you want and I can put together um, a special kit just for you with all the interfacing and zippers and everything. Um, I ordered a ton of new zippers that should be arriving next week, so we'll have a lot more 22 and 9 inch options. Um, and then like I said, we're hoping to also get more patterns in pretty soon as well. So we're going to start off with these side panel pieces. This is step number one in your instructions. So I've already fused together my interfacing to my lining. So this is my exterior and this is my lining. Um, and what you're going to do is put um, them right sides together. You guys know how to do that. And um, you're going to sew along your top and sides. And then we're going to flip it right sides out and top stitch. So that's where we're going to get started. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Let me see here, actually. I'm actually gonna 
just do this for now so you guys can see my machine. <clears throat> so for the top stitching part, you might want to have um, an, a thread handy that you want to top stitch with because we're going to be also top stitching when we're putting our zippers in. To keep, it helps keep the fabric away from the zipper teeth when you do that. So um, I'm just going to grab two pins, I think and pin my two corners because we're sewing three sides all together. Um, I'm going to pin at these two points. I've had this cut in and out, cut out an interface and sitting in project bag for months. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm so glad, Liliana. That's awesome. Okay. Hi, Grace. We're making a sew together bag. Um, it's a bag that has three, it has like basically seven different compartments on the inside. Um, I'll just show you real quick. It looks like this. And this is part one because we probably won't finish tonight. Um, so you're welcome to go back and re-watch it later. We have all the materials available at the shop. Okay, and I believe in the instructions it also says, yeah, all seam allowances are a quarter inch unless stated otherwise. So we're going to drop this at a quarter inch, and I'm also going to um, backstitch. The other day I was thinking, um, Man, I've just been sewing uh, so much. How can you ever like accidentally sew not right sides together? And then like literally the same project I thought that with, I sewed two pieces together, like right and wrong side together. And I was like, all right, this still happens. It's fine. It was a humbling moment. <laughs> oh my, okay. So I'm just eyeballing where my needle drops down so that I can um, pivot. Um, I know it's hard to see because I'm sewing on the interfacing side right now, but you're going to stop a quarter of an inch away from the side edge and then just pivot it, double check that you're still at a quarter inch and then keep going. And then back stitch. And before I set this one aside, I'm just going to flip it just to make sure that it, everything looks okay. All right, so this is kind of what you want it to look like, but we're going we're gonna to clip our corners before we actually turn it out. So I'll sew my next one. Um, tonight Matthew is finishing a one of his projects. I thought, oh, we're gonna have like a little project night. Um, he's been refinishing an old uh, like buffet cabinet. You know, one of those like uh, yeah, it's just called a buffet, right? Um, it has like drawers and doors in it for like storing dishes and things. Um, he's been refinishing it. He found it at one of the properties that he works at. And um, he's almost done. Just needs the new like door pulls. So I think he's gonna work on that tonight. And then if we're not too tired, you might watch an episode of Stranger Things. That's the show we've been watching. Um, a new season is supposed to come out, and I've already seen all of Stranger Things, and so I was really excited that a new season was coming out. But I watched it with my siblings, and I was like, well, I need someone to watch this with when it comes out, and you've never seen it before, so I've been catching him up. So when the next season comes out, we can watch it together. All right. Grab my shears. So 
So I'm going to cut this. Can you see that? There we go. Um, just like close to the edge at that corner and at this corner. And then I'm going to flip it. Okay, and then that helps your corners poke out a lot better. Um, and I'm also actually going to press this before I top stitch it. So let me turn on my iron. Okay, trim this one. and flip. I've been making all of my new, oh, this one is a little bit I need to restitch here. Hold on. Um, I've been making all of my new bags for my sewing supplies out of this fabric, but I didn't want them all to like match perfectly, so I had to make sure I picked fabrics from this collection I hadn't used before. Um, so I'm very happy this one. Okay, so um, you cut these out using a template, and it looks like when I made my template one, or when I did it with my template, one of my pieces was too small, so I was a little shy of a quarter of an inch here, so I'm just going to sew that shut. So um, Annie's asking if I use a tool to fully open my seams before I iron. Um, for something like this that's so open, I don't feel the need to, but if I did use something, it would be the purple thing. It has like a little like pointy curved edge right here, and I would just like... Um, Um, press that along the seam to make sure it's like fully, it's actually easier to do on like a table, to make sure it's like fully um, stuck all the way out. I especially do that when I'm in like a tight space, but this one is so open, I don't really feel the need to do that, but if you want to use a tool, the purple thing is really nice. It's really cheap and little and gets the job done. Okay, so I'm going to take this to my iron real quick, just on the side over here, and iron it. I just make sure that the two folds where the, um, the folds where the two fabrics meet lines up perfectly so that when you top stitch it, one's not showing over the other. Now we're all the way at our stitches here. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Um, when you're done pressing, you can also change out your thread to whatever top stitch color you want. I'm using this darker pink um, because it's kind of, it's the color of this dark pink button and kind of the, kind of goes with this darker peachy color over here. I just, I, that's the color I use to quilt, so I think I'm, it's gonna be my accent thread color. I have my um, thread wall organizer that was hung up in my last sewing room that I need to get hung up. All my thread is just in a bin right now. I also have all of my, um, you know, my whole stash of stuff in two plastic bins 
and I'm trying to figure out how I want to store slash display it. And I think what I'm going to do is get old cardboard boxes or empty bolts and cut them down to the height of my bookshelf and um, wrap it around those. So I'll let you guys know how that goes if that ends up working out. Okay. Switching out my thread. I am being boring and using all white. <laughs> no problem, Kim. I actually, I would have done white as well if I hadn't recently expanded my thread collection. And now that I have so many colors, I feel like I need to use all of them. So I find any excuse to use an accent color that I can. Um, the next bag lady time is May 31st. It's a Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. All right, let's top stitch this. Oh, wait, hold on. Mm. Okay, I just re realized something. So I'm leaving my bobbin white because I just don't feel like um, switching it out so I just realized that I have to pay attention to which one is getting the colorful thread so I'm gonna make sure it's the exterior because the inside I don't really care about so if you're doing the same thing as me watch out for that okay sewing with the exterior side up And I'm just doing like as close to the edge as I can. Um, I would say this is an eighth of an inch or less. <laughs> yep, any an eighth of an inch. I'll show you up close. that and when you're done with these you can actually just set them aside because we're probably not going to use them again today just get those out of the way Those are finished. I'm going to change out my thread so I don't forget to do that. Okay. Um, top stitch a new coffee cozy pattern. Oh, that's fun. Fresh, in your, fresh on your mind, huh? Okay, so next, this is the more complicated part, and this next part's probably why most of you are actually here. So let's, let's go over to the cutting mat. Um, for this next part, you're gonna need all of your B pieces, which is, um, um, actually see if I um, which are made up of your lining. And then you'll also need all six of your pocket lining pieces. So your lining is this, and your pocket lining is this. Um, well, not those fabrics, but those dimensions. And you'll need all three of your zippers. So I think having mismatched zippers for this is really fun. I don't know why, but I want my fabric to match, but I want my zippers to be different. So um, I have two blue and a pink, so I want the pink one to be in the middle, so I'm just going to try to pay attention to that. We'll take this paper off of here. 
Um, if you guys need zippers, um, I ordered a bunch of new colors, or more colors, restock a little bit. So if there's a specific color you're looking for, let me know. Um, those will be in next week. Okay, so this diagram is what I'm going to be going off of. So let's look at... Um, it tells you to write B1, B2, B3, and B4 on the backs of them. Um, and because I don't want it to iron off, I'm not going to use my friction pen. I'm just going to use a regular pen. It's the interfacing. It's never going to show. So I'm just going to write B1. B2. B3. And the fourth, I think they're just saying that that helps you keep it all straight um, when you're trying to make your sandwiches correctly. So um, if you want to go ahead, if you have enough space, go ahead and line it all up like this and then go over to the next page and kind of read along with me. Lay B1 right side up. B1 right side up. Unzip one of the nine inch zippers halfway. Lay the zipper, pull side down. Pull side is this side, so pull side down. Along the right edge, right here. With the center up, um, wait, along the right edge, matching the center of the zipper with the center of the nine three quarters inch edge. So I'm going to grab my pin cushion and we'll mark the center of these two things. Of the long edge, your nine and three quarters inch one. So I have that. <clears throat> Lay one pocket lining piece. So go over here and grab a pocket lining piece. Um, Robin, oh, thank you for that information, Robin, for storing my fabric. That's awesome. Um, okay, lay one pocket lining piece right side down on the zipper and B1. This will make a sandwich with B1 right side up. Zipper right side down and pocket lining right side down. So the seam using a zipper foot make the seam no more than a quarter inch. So this one is actually pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Let's mark the middle of this one here. Um, and then I'm actually going to use some Wonder Clips, which I keep stored in my sewing together bag, to pin along the rest of this. So you're gonna you're gonna sew a couple inches and then zip your zipper all the way up to get the pull out of the way, and then zip the rest or sew the rest of it. And you want to make sure your lining and your pocket lining. Line up on the edges. And I'm just going to do that first part because I know that when I get halfway down here, I can just re like layer everything with my fingers. So this is what this first part should look like. And then I will say that it gets a little bit um, um, complicated after this, but this first part's pretty easy. All right, let's take it over to the sewing machine. <clears throat> okay. 
Oh, I need to switch out my foot. Put a zipper foot on. Okay, so when you're sewing on zippers, if you're not familiar with this, if this is new for you, there's a part of your zipper foot that goes up, like a little step. It's like up, it's like up, and then down. That up part is to position the feet of your zipper up against. And so that's going to help you sew as close as you can to your zipper teeth without sewing on them. If you can position your teeth directly under that step and then your needle to the hole right next to it. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple stitches and then I'm gonna back stitch. And as you go, you wanna make sure that the raw edge of both of your fabrics and the edge of your zipper are lining up and then that your teeth is underneath that little step of the zipper foot. So now that I've sewn just a little bit, what I'm going to do is lift up my presser foot but keep my needle in there and I'm going to zip my, my zipper pull the rest of the way. This part's always a little bit kind of maneuver it just the right way. And I'll layer everything up back together again. Yeah, sure, of course, Becky. Okay, and then I'm going to double check it because I always want to make sure I didn't accidentally sew on my teeth. So I pull my fabric away from my teeth and it looks pretty good. So now I have half of my zipper sewn in with a lining side and a zipper pouch side. All right, let's go back to the table. Turn your fabrics right side out, folding the pocket lining to the back and pulling the zipper top. You now have B1 in the pocket lining, wrong sides together, which is true. Top stitch the lining and the pocket lining along the edge of the zipper. This helps keep the pocket lining out of the zipper while in use. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my white thread. I'm just gonna keep it consistent and only use the pink on the exterior, so since this is the lining, I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch, switching out my foot again. This kind of project is where you really want snap-on presser feet. So easy to switch in and out. Okay, I'm actually going to give it a quick press away from the presser feet. So I don't, like, and when I say quick, I mean pretty quick. I just want enough to, when I'm pulling the zipper taut, I want that to be how it stays. You can see over here how fast I'm doing it. You don't want to leave heat on the zipper for too long. So now we have this. Look how crisp that looks. We're doing great. 
Okay. Next step. For the other side of the zipper, use B2. So all of these beads are actually the same size. I just labeled them so that as I'm sandwiching things together, I know what's what. But this is all, these are all the same size, so don't be confused by that. So sandwich the zipper before, as before, with B2 right side up. So B2 is right side up. Zipper right side down. Um, and the second pocket lining right side down. So you can see that this actually puts both of our pocket linings together, right sides together, which as you can open, which as you can imagine is what we want for when you open up your zipper pouch. Make sure that you align the edges of all the pieces together. Remember to unzip the zipper halfway. Okay, so let's halfway unzip this. And Instead of finding the middle again, I'm just going to line up all of these edges, just these three edges around here. And just wonder cut the first couple of inches. Please show again. Um, sorry, I don't know what part you want. I'll re-sandwich it for you. So this is what I have, this is what we just did. I have B2 right side up, so just my next lining piece. And then it says to put your zipper right side down, and when it talks about the right side of the zipper, it's talking about the side with the pool. So I'm gonna put that right side down. And then this is my pocket lining right side down. So we are creating another sandwich. So I'll show you when you open it up, after it's sewn, it's going to look like this. And then the pocket side is going to have the two pocket pieces facing each other as well. So that's what we want. I just need to make sure I have all of my edges um, lined up real quick. When I'm trying to line things up, but just move them ever so slightly, sometimes I'll just literally use my nails to like scrape it over and it will move it just the tiniest hair. Grab my pocket piece. <laughs> and that just knocked on the window. Working outside. Um, okay, so notice that this, these two pieces of the um, pocket lining don't need to line up at the bottom. Okay, so here is this. Oh. All right, so now I'm going to take this and sew this side with my zipper foot over there. Oh, thanks, Darlene. I was lining it up with the zipper closed because it's a little easier to do that way. Then I opened it up. I will say that the other two times I made this, the part I struggled with was making sure the edges of all of those pockets lined up every time. Every now and then they were off just a little bit.
this too. So. Trying to zip the zipper back up. Or unzip it actually. This looks right to me. We have our zipper sandwiched between these two linings and on the other side we have these two pocket lining pieces that are both facing the um, correct side. So let's take a closer look at this. Oh Maria, it is beautiful. I know, I kind of wish I was outside. The whole week's supposed to be nice though this weekend. All right, so here's just a closer look. When you have it open this way, you have um, both of your pocket linings right side facing you, and when you have it this way, you have your zipper and both of your linings right side facing you. So now we just need to top stitch this side. So let me just very lightly press this with my iron and then take it back over to my machine real quick. Eighth of an inch. Make sure you switch your thread if you're doing that. And I'm just adjusting the pocket lining on the bottom and the lining on the top. Make sure they're both as taut as possible. zipper again. Alright. Alright, let's see what our next step is. one we just did that so now repeat this process for the zippered pockets between B2 3 and 3 and B3 and B4 pay attention to the zippers directionality keeping all the zippers open in the same direction for consistency okay so I have a pink and blue zipper left so I want my pink one to be next so we're just going to follow the same steps as before we have B2 right here. So we're going to do B2 and B3. B2, right side facing you. Zipper, right side down. Pocket lining, right side down. Just like that. Okay? Just have to make sure that all of our edges line up properly. to mark the center of my zipper. Here. And then 
center of this. I'm just putting a little like bigger crease in here and lining that up with my pen. Okay, and then instead of marking the center of this, I'm just going to line it up along the edge. Make sure that your pocket lining is right side down. I have a light fabric, so it might be hard for you guys to see, but it has these colorful stitch designs, and that's my right side, and this is my wrong side. Okay, taking this back over, one thing to also make sure is that your zipper pull is facing the same direction as before. So when it's closed, both of mine would be up here. So you just want to make sure that you don't have like one zipper that opens up here and one that opens down here. So I've noticed that with bag making, zippers are super easy. Because usually, it just entails sandwiching it in between layers of lining. I know there's obviously exceptions, but that's the case with the Mega Dream Bag, the Sew Together Bag, and um, even the embroidery pouch that I made lately, and the Bitsy Box that we'll be doing in a couple weeks. They all involve just sandwiching the zipper in between pieces of lining, and then it's, um, from there on, it's pretty straightforward. How are you guys doing? If anyone's sewing along with me, let me know how you are, what step you're at. I try to go a good pace for this if you're sewing live, but I also am keeping in mind that some people watch this after and might be really annoyed if I'm going too slow. <laughs> so try to do a nice steady pace. My natural pace is really obnoxiously fast. got B1 and B2 zipping up. Yay! It's awesome. Okay, so I have my two linings wrong sides together and my zipper looks good. All of my teeth look good. So now I'm just going to give it a light press before I um, top stitch. Okay. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> Switching my presser feet again for my top stitch. If you don't mind top stitching with a zipper foot, you might be able to get away with it. If you prefer that more than switching your feet on and off. Okay. Gonna keep those two pieces taut as I do my top stitch. Don't forget to change your thread if you want a thread color change. Uh, 
Oh my gosh. The dogs above us are being so loud. Usually I don't even notice that there's dogs upstairs, but every now and then they get really loud. We're on the first floor. about halfway there from finishing this zipper segment. So let's take it back over and put on our next lining piece. So I have B3 right side up and this part is where it feels like it should be different but really it's not. It's still zipper right side down. It just feels different because the piece our zipper is attached to is a lot bigger now. But we're still doing our zipper right side down. I'm just pinning it to keep it in place as I line up this edge over here. But now you're going to take a pocket lining piece right side down as well. Make sure that those edges all line up. Okay. There we go. And now we're gonna go take that over and stitch it. So the process from here on finishing this um, zipper, zipper, what do they call it? Zipper sandwich um, is pretty repetitive. Zipper foot. Hey Joey, okay, that sounds good. Thanks for joining. Sounds fun having company over. I'm excited for Matt and I to um start hosting things at our house. We're trying to take it slow the first couple months, but then I hope we have a lot of friends over regularly. Um, okay. I'm gonna open my zipper up the rest of the way. This part is always so annoying. I'm always afraid I'm gonna break my needle. I try to slide it past. See if it looks right. Keep getting it caught on this. All right. Now we have three of these panels all sewn together, two zippers, and two zipper pouches. All my fabric is facing the correct direction. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a light press before I top stitch. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, Luana. <laughs> All right, we're so close. We're gonna stop after we finish our last zipper. And then we'll continue in two weeks. Unless, if this is the part that was scaring you guys, and, you'd, and then now you're like, oh, I can finish this by myself, go for it. But if you want help finishing the rest of it, I'll complete the bag in two weeks. All right, this is our last zipper. So close, you guys. So I've got B3 here. Right side up. And I'm gonna put my zipper, my last zipper, right side down, making sure that my zipper pull is on the same side as my other zipper pull. I'm gonna mark the center of my zipper just by folding it in half, sticking a pin in there. Okay, and then this one in half, I'm gonna press it. And then we only have, you should only have two more pocket lining pieces. We use one of them. All right, all my edges are lined up. My zipper is open a little bit with the pull on the correct side. My fabrics are right sides together. And I have my middle, my center lined up. We're good to go. Zipper foot on. I had a very long day today, starting at 6 a.m., which I have been waking up at 6 a.m., but I had a, like, a thing with people at 6 a.m. and then the rest of the day, <laughs> which was a lot, but everything was really fun. So I woke up at 6 to go walking with one of my friends. Um, now I have a bunch of friends in this city, so we go walking together every week. It's kind of a new thing. Um, and then uh, my cousin came over at 7 a.m. for coffee. And then at 8, I, had, I went into the shop because on Thursday mornings we go in early to get the shipment out from yesterday. 
So I went up at 8 for that. And then I had to go up to Loveland to the long arm. Um, so I left the shop at 9.30 to get there by 10. And quilted a quilt. It only took me an hour and a half to do this small one. And then... I went up to Lebanon to get my marriage certificate so I can change my name. Uh, I could have done it by mail, but then it would have taken a lot longer. I couldn't believe, I understand that they have to mail it to you because it's like a physical item, but you have to request it by mail too. You can't even like call or email to request them to send it. You have to like mail to in a request to send it. So I didn't want it to take that long. So I was already in Lebanon. I went up to Lebanon to do that because that's where we got married. So now I can go to Florence to change my name. I had to go to Lebanon and then Florence. So the two things I needed were in opposite directions. Um, and then I went to my friend's house. She just moved and I helped her paint one of her rooms. And then, um, And then I came back home, prepped some stuff for the weekend. Oh, you guys, we have a special sale going on tomorrow. I had to prep everything for that today. Make sure you keep an eye out. It should post at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we have a special flash sale happening over the weekend. Got the stuff ready for that. And then I took a little nap in preparation for tonight because my energy is has been so low, so I decided to take a little nap. And then I took a shower and I cooked dinner. Matt's been cooking most of the dinner lately, but tonight I cooked. And then now I'm here with you guys. So it was a very back-to-back uh, -back day. kind of like those when it ends up working out, but when I have back-to-back -back stuff planned and then things don't happen like they're supposed to, then it's a little bit stressful. Oh, I'm top-stitching now. <laughs> I didn't say that. Top-stitching. Thank you, Diana. Okay, guys, so here's what we have so far. We are so close. All we have left to do of this part is add another lining and pocket lining to this side, and then we'll be done sewing in all of these zippers. How great is that? Okay. So we have V4 right side up. And my zipper piece is even bigger now, but no matter how big it is, our zipper goes right side down. We're going to line up these edges. <laughs> Darlene, <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> okay, going to line up this right here. Okay, and then my last pocket lining, right side down. Make sure my edges are all lined up. Unzip this just a little bit of the way. All right. And we are ready to sew our last piece.
How do I always struggle with this part? Anyone else struggling with this? Oh, we may have to reopen the zipper. Especially with these nails. I was going to try to get them off today, but you guys just heard. My schedule is too packed. <laughs> I might have time tomorrow, though. Double check everything before we top stitch. Okay, looks good. No problem, Lynn. I know a lot of people probably do that. All right, a light press. I'm so excited. I've been thinking all day about one of my best friends um, has been trying to buy a house, her and her husband. And they've been having the worst luck because the housing market's so crazy right now. And they really want to live in Newport, but it's just really expensive to live in Newport. So they weren't sure if they were going to be able to. But they're under contract for a house. And I have been praying all day that their inspection goes well because it is only two blocks away from here from my house so I'm like oh this is like a childhood dream we both get married and move two blocks away from each other this would be so fun so I've been thinking about that all day because their inspection is supposed to happen tomorrow and I really hope it goes well Oh, Lynn, are you the one who was saying yesterday your granddaughter's in the uh, NICU? I'm so sorry. That must be so hard, I can imagine. Something like metal is banging and I can't tell what it is. Right. Awesome. We did it, guys. Here we go. All right, so this is what we have to work with. Let me read the next step to see if I have it in me. Pocket creation. Let's make three pockets. From the center of the zipper teeth, mark a line three and a quarter inches. Yeah, we can do this. All right, let's do this and then we'll, we'll call it a night. Grab a marking pen. Um, I'm using the Marfie Gone pen. This is water soluble, so you just need to get it wet to get rid of it. Um, you could also use the friction pen if you want. All right. Let's see here. I'm gonna fold our pocket lining pieces over to one side, I think. So from the center of the zipper teeth, mark a line three and a quarter inches on pieces B2, three, and four. So three and a quarter inches from the center of the zipper teeth. Here's my first one. Quarter, one, two, three. Quarter, one, two, three, and three. And I'll just connect the dots. Okay. 
and I'm marking it from the center of the zipper teeth like it says. Um, my ruler is just a Creative Grid 2.5 by 12.5 inch ruler, but I have this little gypsy gripper on top of it. Suction cups on there. It's like a little handle you can put it on any ruler. I love it. One, two, three. All right. Pick up the vinyl piece and fold along the zipper so that the wrong sides of B1 and 2 are together. Okay, so pick up the lining piece and fold along the zipper like this so that the wrong sides are together. And the right sides of the pocket linings are facing each other. Stitch along the marked line through all of the layers. So make sure that these pocket lining layers are flat inside. And I'm just going to like actually shake it out over here. Um, yes, we do have the rulers in our shop. Okay, so I'm just checking to make sure right here that both of my pocket linings are flat. There's no bubbles. And over here, so I'm just going to lay this flat in there as it's folded along the zipper, and I'm going to sew on this blue line. Stitch along the marked line through all the layers, making sure the pocket linings are straight and taut. Trim off the excess bottom pocket lines to a quarter inch. Repeat this process. Beginning at the stitch lines, sew the open raw edges of each pocket closed. This creates open raw edges. Beginning at the stitch line. This creates the sides of the pockets and aids in keeping the layers together. Okay, so. Hi, Maria. Oh, okay, hold on, let me. Hi, Maria. Um, we're an online store. So we do um, two Facebook Lives every week. On Wednesdays at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we have product sales. So you everything on our show is discounted 10 to 20% off. And even if you can't come right at 1 o'clock, you could rewatch it later and all the discounts are valid until midnight. Um, and then we have this, which is like our free class um, every other week in the summer. Um, it's called My Sip and Sew. So this is Thursdays at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So those are two of the things you can tune, on, tune in on. And then we have our online store, of course. On our, our website is Just Sew Studio. Put it right there. Okay. I'm going to... Shake this out again, fold it along my pink zipper, my middle one, and so now one side is going to have this that you already sewed, and one side's going to have your flat zipper. So shake it out, and then we're going to put this here. Um, Maria, if you're interested in getting our text reminders, I do send a text on Wednesdays and Thursdays before we go live so you can be reminded. And this, if you sign up for the text, it'll also give you a $5 coupon to our website.
Okay, so here we have two of these pockets. And I'm just going to make sure that all the layers got caught in everything. Yep, looks good. Um, all right, last zipper, shaking it out. Make sure it's flat and flat. Okay. Okay, so the last thing we have to do here for these pockets is sew the sides closed. So I'm going to take each pocket and starting from that stitch line that we drew all the way to the edge, I'm just going to stitch it closed. Um, and it doesn't tell me a, set, a length, so I'm just going to assume it's a quarter inch as well, just like everything else. And after this, we'll be done. And I am back stitching at the um, beginning and end of each of these stitches. Unzip my zipper so that the hole isn't right at the end there. Marsha, you're going to make another one of these bags. Good for you. have to do is trim well I don't really want to do that <laughs> it tells you to trim these um, the you know so if you have like the bottom side of this where the pocket linings are trim them down to a quarter inch but they're already like only a little bit bigger than a quarter inch I don't really want to do that but okay so can you see the inside of these pockets forming yes you can open up all of them and make sure that your pocket linings look how you want them to. But there you go. You can really see it start to take shape, which is always very exciting when working on a new project. So this is as far as we're going to go tonight. In two weeks, mark your calendar two weeks from now, we're going to hopefully complete this. Um, so you'll need your exterior, your quilted exterior, the um, side panels that we worked on at the beginning, your binding, and then this pocket sandwich to complete your project. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it a night. Thank you so much for joining us, um, joining me. I don't know why I said us. Um, this is a perfect time to stop because I'm dressed now. My eyes are just now starting to get heavy. Thanks so much for your help. It came together so much easier than I expected, right? I feel like it looks intimidating because you're like, oh my gosh, four zippers. But then you do it and it's not actually that scary. Yeah, no problem, Ellen. Of course, Cindy, Melinda, 
Kim. No problem. I had fun, guys. I wanted to make another one of these anyways to match my new Mega Dream Bag. So um, this helps keep me accountable and hopefully helps keep you guys accountable to finishing projects and taking on new challenges and learning new things. Um, all right, everyone. Have a great evening. I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, Elizabeth, it's called a Sew Together Bag is the pattern. Sew Together Bag. If you can't find it on the website, that might mean it's sold out. I think we only had one left, but we'll have more. If you want to send us a Facebook message um, and ask us to put you on a wait list, I can do that for you as well. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.